You know, it's a beautiful day today. The sun was shining. It's not too cold. And when I walked to this venue, I had plenty of time. So I thought by myself, let's go for a very nice cup of coffee. And I was really looking forward to that cup of coffee. But then, when I came into the coffee house, it turned out to be a disappointment because there was quite a queue and I had to wait endlessly until I could make my order. And the queue was moving extremely slowly. And I'm not very patient, I know that, but this was so extremely inefficient, I was really annoyed. And when it was finally my turn to order my double espresso, the lady then told to a colleague what I wanted to have. She then wrote my name on a cup, misspelled, of course. That lady then turned over my cup to another colleague standing somewhere else, and my cup was put in a queue where it was standing for a while. And then the guy who was making the coffee finally made my double espresso, and when he finished doing that, he gave that coffee to another person who finally gave it to me. And I thought by myself, this is exactly how we have organized healthcare. And don't get me wrong, I'm quite positive about healthcare. I think we are actually living in the golden age of medicine. It has never been better in healthcare. So everywhere you look, whether it is oncology, cardiovascular disease, rheumatology, infectious diseases, everything is getting better. We now can treat different diseases that we, did, that we didn't have a cure for only five or six years ago. And sometimes they can be treated with a single pill, without a lot of side effects, and with huge effectivity. So that's absolutely fantastic. And for the very, very first time in the history of mankind, we are actually living longer because of healthcare. Of course, we're living longer for decades, for centuries already, but that's usually because better social circumstances, because um, there is better hygiene, less warfare is also really helpful. But now we're really living longer because of healthcare. And people who make these graphs estimate that the baby that's born this year or last year will have a 50% chance of living longer than 100 years. And that's not even taken into account the effect of prevention, because probably if we will have better prevention, we will also live even longer than 100 years. But there is a price to be paid for living longer, because we have actually traded dying of acute diseases like myocardial infarction, heart attack, or oncology, or other acute diseases, we have traded that for living longer with chronic diseases. And people who are older than 70 or 75 years old nowadays are actually accumulating chronic disorders. They are, do not die of a heart attack anymore, but they will remain alive with impaired heart function, heart failure. And they will have some chronic lung disease, and their kidney function will be slightly impaired. And they will have some diabetes and some problems with their joints and with their eyes and with their ears. And the current model in healthcare to address all these problems, which can be five, six, seven in patients who are older than 70 year old, is actually not very efficient. Because what we do now, we have a different doctor for every different disease. And that's actually what we tend to do nowadays. We have a doctor for your heart, we have a doctor for your lungs, we have a doctor for the intestines, we have a doctor who takes care of your diabetes, another one who takes care of the kidney. So we have been specializing very much and every organ has his own doctor. But it's even worse. We're not even specializing only, we're also subspecializing. So we don't even have doctors who take care of your lungs anymore. We have a doctor who will only do asthma, and then another one who will only do lung cancer. And we even have doctors who do a specific type of lung cancer, and nothing else. And I'm waiting for the doctor who says, I'm only going to do the left lung, I cannot do the right lung anymore. 
And that's what we've been doing all the time. And we tend to forget that, of course, the whole is greater than the sum of the parts. Why is this a problem? Well, I think we all know that if you look very much in detail, you tend to forget the bigger picture. And that is the problem with subspecializing as well. If you're so much focused on your favorite organ, tissue, disease, you tend to forget that the patient is more than a collection of all these various organs. And also from a patient perspective, this is not a model that is really sustainable because patients hear increasingly that the doctor that they see right now cannot help them with their current problem and they need to see someone else for that specific problem. And patients travel like gnomes from waiting room to waiting room to see all these different doctors. So we have become extremely fragmented in healthcare. But there is a solution, I think. And that is, we have to transform ourselves from being subspecialists to superspecialists. What do I mean by that? Well, a subspecialist is someone, and I've just explained that, who knows a lot about his or her specific area of expertise. And there is nothing wrong with that. It's all perfectly well. We need people who know a lot of tiny bits of medicine because that will bring us further, they will deliver high quality care, and they can do research on their areas. But actually, how do we move from being subspecialist to super specialists? Well, very simple. You can be a subspecialist, but if you do not lose your interest in the other areas beyond the area of your subspecialty, you may call yourself a super specialist. And that will make probably healthcare much better. I'm an avid football supporter. And I actually tend to compare healthcare sometimes with football tactics. And the football fanatics in the audience will actually recognize Catanaccio as one of the old-fashioned football tactics of about 50 years ago. It was position played, uh, posi position play played by various countries in Europe. It was a tactic where actually everybody has his own position and played the ball to someone else. But people hardly moved from their position to another position in the field. It is defensive, it is boring, and it was not very effective. There were not a lot of teams who won big tournaments with this tactic. And this is exactly what we do in hospitals. Everybody is doing his little job is not moving at all. And when there is something a little bit beyond your area of comfort, you have to refer the patient to your colleagues. And actually, this is not only happening in hospitals, it is also happening in coffee shops, as I shown you in the beginning of my talk. And it's also happening, for example, at airports, the summum of inefficiency, I would add. And there is an alternative. And that is another football tactics. And that is the football tactics of total football. And that's very simple. That's the football of Johan Cruyff, which actually means that if somebody loses his position, if somebody has to move, has to do something else, is not available, then a colleague, someone else in the system, can take over that position. And that football is offensive, is attractive, and is extremely effective, and will win you a lot of games. So, we have to move from Catanaccio to total football, and that will make us become super specialists instead of subspecialists. And it's very important we become super specialists because subspecialists are gray mice, are actually a bit boring, and will not bring us any further. But if we really want to be effective, we have to become super specialists. Actually, people who can change their color dependent on the different circumstances. And I'll tell you, that's not only make things much more effective, it is also going to give you much more joy and much better coffee. Thank you very much.